Peggy 18. We knew from the beginning that, that when Wake ends up in the dark place, uh, getting out from there is going to be a long hellish journey uh, and a hard struggle. And I guess that, that where we are now is fiction becoming reality. I was playing a lot of fantasy games before I really had ever heard about Alan Wake and a friend recommended it. And it had a big impression on me just because of how complex the characters were. Seeing a game that rivaled other mediums with its complexity of character was really inspiring to me. Hello? The game that sort of nailed Remedy on their storytelling. I was mostly impressed by the atmosphere and the, the lighting and especially the, I think, the use of music. It was unlike anything I'd ever played and it felt like I was transported into this playable Stephen King novel with this weird story taking me for a crazy ride. It was first of all proving that we can do bigger games in Finland. There's this Finnish flavor in it that you, you cannot really put your finger on it and I like it dearly. We are kind of like cherishing our, our, our you know, culture and what we are known for, our quirky little things and manners. Obviously before Alan Wake you had Max Payne, which was quirky and strange, but I would say Alan Wake kind of took those qualities and ramped them up to 11. And it's very rare to see a game that is equal parts horror, humor, and strangeness. Al, please tell me we're headed for the nearest. You're now leaving Bright Falls. Come back soon, sign. It was very, very important to me to come up with a hero character who is not a professional hero. Him being a writer allowed me to explore the idea of creative process and writing process as part of the plot, which keeps on being an element, of course, in, in Alan Wake 2 as well. I think it's kind of common knowledge that we took a lot of inspiration from Twin Peaks and there was nothing quite like that at the time. We tried to, in that game, integrate the story into the gameplay more, so with the manuscript pages the player found, kind of try and find novel ways to kind of tell the story. These projects are huge endeavors and many, many things, many of them out of, totally out of your control, need to click into place for a big game to happen. There is an element of luck. The same very cool concept at certain point in time might not get any interest or excitement around it. Suddenly, everybody wants it. Fuse box is missing a fuse. Horror as a genre in pop culture overall has been growing in popularity a lot. And I think that that was the missing puzzle piece in creating a concept of Alan Wake 2 where everything just suddenly clicked into place and was very exciting. In the build-up to the Game Awards, announcing Alan Wake 2 was huge for us. It was huge for the team because this is an idea that has lived in Sam's brain for 13 years. And now we finally get to present at least a sliver of it to the world. This is so exciting, Alan Wake 2. It's been a decade fans have been asking you for it. Why is now the right time to bring him back? We knew this is gonna be a pretty scary experience. I was but gonna say- Now we are convinced everybody is ready. What? You are ready. We showcased a, a demo of the game when we were at the Summer Games Fest. We chose a mission which takes place on Saga's side and it showcases the Pacific Northwest. She's investigating, there's a lot of supernatural weirdness. For fans of the franchise, it's a return to Cauldron Lake, an old friend, and it's got Casey in it. <laughs> Remedy has really found its niche. We know our strengths, we know what we are good at. We know that that is world building, that is atmosphere, and we keep building on these strengths and we keep investing into all other areas and seeing how can we do more, how can we go bigger, how can we go bolder. It's a story that you're not told, it's a story that you play. And the team has done a lot of really great work in coming up with unique and interesting ways to make that experience playable. Between every game project, that we have made, we have done a new concept of Alan Wake 2. It's been frustrating through the years not being able to get it started and be excited about it, and then it's not happening. 
I think that the game we are now making is by far the most exciting, the most interesting and ambitious one out of all of those concepts. And I'm really, really happy that it's this Alan Wake 2 that we are making and none of the earlier ones. Hey, I'm Sam Lake, the creative director at Remedy. I'm Ilka Ville. I'm half of the actor of Alan Wake. Hi, I'm Matthew Peretta. I'm the other half of Alan Wake. So we have the, the, the full Alan Wake in the house, yeah. the band back together. I'm so happy to be here. Hi, guys. I haven't seen you in a while. Yeah, and it's so cool to have you all here like this. I mean, Matt, so sorry that you yeah. couldn't join us in person. It's been a crazy two years and some more, but let's talk about some more about Alan Wake. Let's talk some more about the history and let's touch upon Alan Wake 2 a little bit later. So, uh, Ilka, yourself and Matt, you've been an integral part of Remedy for how long has it been? 17 years? 15 years at this point? 17 years. That was the first time I visited Sam at the offices, Remedy offices. It's been a while. I've, I've sort of, I'm getting old with Alan Wake, I guess. <laughs> yeah, Alan Wake is getting gray hair. Yeah, yeah. Your voice stays the same, but I'm, you know, I'm going old. <laughs> Did you think, all right, no, a uh, different question. Did you, th you guys think you would still be here? It's 2022. Alan Wake came out, the first game came out in 2010. This very much was part of the plan. Uh, already before the first game came out, it, it, we, we, we had no idea that, that it would be, <laughs> you know, uh, this many years later, but, but, but very, very uh, happy to tell everybody that Alan Wake 2 is confirmed. Alan Wake 2 confirmed, that feels so good to say. <laughs> Matt, did you, same question, did you think you would still be here? I mean, you hope, you know, you, it's like, I, I, you know, Vita, I can dream. I have big, big dreams. So yes, it's like, I, you hope, but, you know, it's like the idea that we're here after after this long and and uh, it's still going strong. No, no, I, 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 but you, you know, it's like I guess show visits. You hope for the best, expect the worst, right? But um, this is, uh, you know, the the announcement that we're going to do more. I think my feeling was uh, relief <laughs> and excitement. Um, I, it's, uh, you know, it's. Uh, it's a part that is so like, it's like in the fabric of who I am. So, you know, to, you know, if someone says, Hey, do you want to do that thing? If that's the fabric of who you are, it's, it's uh, that's a quick yes. It, it, it was a quick, quick yes. When, when we finally got to popping the question. <laughs> we, we work remotely with, with Matt. We are rarely in the same room, but it, somehow I feel I feel really close to Matt, like listening to a lot of, a lot of your voice. It is something that has really grown, you know, <clears throat> it's, um, uh, yeah, we both kind of are, we, we wait to see what the other person does. It's like, it's like uh, blackjack, the reveal, right? You go, Ooh, okay. <clears throat> I got a, a nine and an eight, you know, like, like looking back, it's always like starts to be hard to see. Like, like who initiated which scene and, and, and kind of like it's just many, many layers and iterations on, 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 on top of it, re refining who Alan Wake is and how he comes across. You would think that that would be difficult, but it really isn't. There's a freedom in that. There's a freedom in, uh, in you, you, you're waiting, you get, you, you're just, it's, it's, uh, it's all about reacting to what's happening. And um, I think uh, it's kind of a, it's a cool creative process. Yeah, I mean, like, like I, I have always felt and, and keep on feeling like, like that, that uh, feeling very privileged uh, to uh, create this character together with you. Uh, and, 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 you know, we, we keep exploring him and, and adding depth to him uh, as, as, as we go. For sure. And it's a process that's, well, unlike any other I've had in my career, but it's also a character that's 
unlike any other. I mean, we've had so much, you know, many long talks about Alawake yeah. with Sam, yeah. and and it's just such a multi-layered, you know, character with with a lot of depth. So I, I really enjoy putting that jacket with the elbow patches on each time. So this process now on working working on the sequel, uh, it it. It, it feels familiar in many ways, uh, but at the same time, it feels very fresh and 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 like it feels like we are breaking new ground. Uh, it's a new genre, and we are pushing further into the horror uh, aspect of it, but also like exploring the depth of the character. In this game, it's like you really. Uh you're you're seeing who Alan Wake is. You're getting uh, uh, an idea of who he is uh, just personally. You're seeing more emotion from him, and um, uh, uh, so just uh, that's exciting for me and for I, for Ilk as well. So that it's you're like, oh wow, um, Alan Wake, the person. That's our that's our kind of like uh, Alan Wake to Alan Wake the person. The person. Yeah. Because I always remember doing Alan Wake 1, we always said that uh, Alan is, like the catchphrase sort of was uh, terrified but cool. That was the essence of, of Alan Wake. That, that was there, and then as Matt points out, like, like we had the aspect of him being the narrator. As a storyteller, he is the narrator, like, like telling the story, and then in the story, Terrified but cool. Terrified but cool. But yeah, now I feel that, of course, he was more than that already in the, in the first game. But now I feel, like you said, there are so many layers, so many layers more. And he's like very, uh, yeah, a, a very deep, interesting character. And yeah, we're getting getting the human the humanity. He's not that that cool anymore. That's the feeling I have. Yeah, I mean, we, we, we are pushing him further than, than ever before. And, and, and that's part of a horror story as well, putting the character through a ringer. What was it like for you, Ilka, when Sam said, hey, we're doing Alan Wake 2? Well, I didn't quite believe him in the beginning because he, he, he'd been saying that for a couple of times that, before, like, that, most that, likely we will be... That, that is true. Yeah. Uh, like, it's been an ongoing <laughs> yeah. discussion like, through all of these years. Like, every like, three like years. I, I, I really want to do it. Yeah. Would, would you be up for more if we would get a chance to do it? We, we are trying to get it uh, done. Uh, it seems likely we we're gonna do it. Now we're gonna do it. Yeah. And then I mean, like, like the first four no. times, I was like, <laughs> like, yeah, let's do this. And now I was like, yeah, whatever. Because, <laughs> yeah, I couldn't believe it. But yeah, when he finally sort of convinced me that you, this time it's it's actually happening, you, I, was, you, I was very happy. Mm -hmm. You you believe it now? I, I well, kind of, yeah. kind of, yeah. yeah. Quite. We announced it. Owl Wake 2, it's confirmed, it's happening. How was that? It, it, it was wonderful uh, getting to the stage with, with, with Jeff and, and showing the trailer and, and, and announcing it and, and talking about it. Uh, and and the, the response from uh, our wonderful uh, fans uh, who have been so patient <laughs> so many years. Ilka, how, I mean, you were in the trailer with the, with the lamp. You looked amazing in all that CG. Well, <laughs> no? was, it, was, it, was it me, actually? Or was it Jake Gyllenhaal? Or was it Keanu Reeves or, or some of the other there, there, 15 there, actors? <laughs> there's, yeah, there, there was a lot of speculation. Yeah, yeah, yeah so I'm yeah. still not sure, but uh, yeah. I know that at the Game Awards, when you were up on stage with Jeff, Sam, you said that we would show something more of Alan Wake 2 in the summer. Yeah, I, 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 I did say that. Uh, well, uh, good news <laughs> and, and, and disappointment, uh, I, I, I guess, as well. Like, like uh, everything is going really well. Uh, a great deal of the game is playable. Uh, we we are iterating it, but uh, we we've been talking the past couple of months, and and we've come to a decision that we will not 
be showing uh, uh, anything big this summer. We want to make sure that we are creating the best possible experience, the best first uh, uh, survival horror game for Remedy. We don't, we don't want to pivot the team away from that focus uh, to work on a demo uh, right now. And, and, and unfortunately, you will have to wait for a proper demo and trailer a bit longer. Yeah, I mean, we've waited 12 years already, so what's, what's a little bit more, right? Yeah. <laughs> Fantastic. Well, thank you guys so much for joining me here. Matt, thank you for phoning in all the way from America. Nice to see you again. Nice to see everybody again. You too. We, 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 we miss we, you. You guys are the best. And thank you everyone for joining us for this Alan Wake update. Happy anniversary. Uh, look mm. forward to... 12 what? years. 12 years. Wow. Happy anniversary. Look forward to more Alan Wake news in the future. And remember, whatever you do, stay in the light. Alan Wake 2 is a psychological survival horror game and the player takes on the role of two different hero characters. The title character, Alan Wake. The story is a monster. And a new character, Saga Anderson. Glad you're on this case with me, Anderson. Alan Wake 2 has many tools in it. <gasps> two narratives. We are exploring two worlds. It's not just Alan Wake this time. We have this theme of duality and echoes in Alan Wake 2, so we needed a counterpoint, like another perspective in the game that was a play off of Alan's, as well as having a character located in the Pacific Northwest so we could have both of those worlds present in the game and playable for the players. Even when we are not playing him, there are a lot of things that tie the story to him, and there are other ways how he is present in those moments as well. The character of Saga, she's an FBI agent and relative newcomer to the Bright Falls area. She is a really capable investigator. She is a mom. She's a teller of bad puns. What's not to love? She's enthusiastic about her job. She really enjoys what she does. But I think her most defining quality for me is her kindness. She's a very empathetic person, and she brings that into her work, and it makes her a better detective and profiler. These two different professions that are similar but different. The artist is looking for inspiration, the detective's looking for answers. You can see the parallel there, but there's different approaches to those things. We're obviously quite aware that the first game came out 13 years ago, so we wanted to make sure that we had a hero character who would bring the perspective of new players. We wanted to make sure that new players into the experience would be learning with her through the story. We wanted to make absolutely sure that we find the right actor for the role, and we were looking for quite a while for Saga. Hi, I'm Melanie Liebird, and I'm playing Saga Anderson in Alan Wake 2. This is my first time working in this medium and doing a game. It's just nice to learn something new. The voiceover part of it can be very intense when you get in the booth, but I've learned so much. All of us have been working with Melanie, and because of the writing process being ongoing, there are always new ideas and writing it more and more specifically to her as a role. I'm excited for the world to see Saga because I think she's a brilliant role model. And just to see a woman in this role, a woman of colour being a protagonist in a game that we don't see that often, and just to have a lifestyle that she has, doing her best to balance work and a family, and I just think that's really relatable for a lot of people. While you know, we wanted to create one cohesive experience, we wanted to give each kind of playable character in their world its own style and mood. Something's not right! In the setup for Saga's experience, she's investigating these ritualistic serial killings. When we were looking at, like, from a narrative and tone perspective, looking at things like True Detective, we actually have a lot of, like, 90s references in terms of, like, things like Seven. The events that bring her to the Pacific Northwest are a series of murders, and they think there might be a serial killer somewhere lurking in the area. Part of this experience taking place in Pacific Northwest is centered around our fictional small town of Pride Falls. This idyllic, slightly quirky small town that clearly then under the surface has shadows and darker things waiting and a, and a mystery waiting. In the first game, you didn't really get to explore the environments, but now you will be able to 
walk around the streets, discover the town a bit more and revisit existing locations, like the diner, for example. Quite a lot of research was done uh, to prepare for this project. I spent several weeks reading research papers, gathering data on forest surveys, learning about key species of the area to properly do justice to the Pacific Northwest. The photogrammetry side of it uh, means that we can actually scan trees on site ourselves. The trees that we're seeing in the game are literally the trees that are from this area in the Pacific Northwest. The player will be going back to Cauldron Lake, which is obviously a key part of the story, be exploring all the forests that are around there. And because we kind of are more slightly open area based, so the player can freely explore, the player can kind of go back and vi revisit locations as part of their playthrough. Sag Anderson, she's not just any FBI agent coming into this case. There are elements to this that, that very much tie to kind of who she really is and, and a journey, a, a mystery to be discovered there as well. First things first, what's your name? So where has Alan Wake been these 13 years? He went missing at the end of the first game. That is the question. Alan Wake 2 is a horror game. In horror stories, we only have victims and monsters. We've come up with a new take on the dark presence, which is more dangerous and terrifying than ever. Horror for me is something that connects my basic primal fears with reality. I love things like atmospheric horror, psychological horror, haunted houses. I like it because the genre of horror has the guts to look at the things that you are too scared to look at yourself. I think a good horror can stick with you for days, sometimes even years. And I think if a good horror manages to give you that feeling, they've really captured something elusive and almost intangible and traumatized the audience in a really, really good way. I don't want to be in the story, just write me out of the story. I really like writing it because I don't have to be surprised by it in a way. I'm setting up surprise for other people. I can scare them. I don't have to scare myself. I'm in control. <laughs> Alan Wake 1 was very much known for its narrative and it was telling a horror story, but then there was a bit of a dissonance between the story trying to have this slightly more slow burn feel to it and the kind of fast paced action gameplay. So we just felt that there was much more of a cohesive fit between the genre of survival horror and the kind of story we wanted to tell for the sequel is not so much about the body horror. It's the everyday weird. Things that look just perfectly fine, and then a twist comes and you're like, okay, what's, what's going on here? Like using dark places as an example. Every single shadow, a moving piece, I'm looking at it, okay, what was there? The flashlight only illuminates a certain part of a scene, so it very easily focuses your attention in a certain composition. Having the, the lighting and the shadows dance around the environment quickly incites your brain to play tricks on you. Essentially what makes the environment scary is, is the atmosphere. So when you add the lighting and the music, that's when the fun begins. Horror tends to be quite a you know, personal perspective towards the issue itself. At times I've noticed that I felt uneased, even anxious. It's really interesting to bring yourself towards that edge musically. We've done a lot of sound design experimentation. For example, with the Dark Presence, Dark Presence Raw. What is that? How do we make that so evil? And we've listened to an enormous amount of different people screaming and animals trying to find the correct scream to fit the dark presence. I think we managed to make it feel like it's a place with a personality, with a pretty unique feel. We're trying to avoid a lot of the cliches, we're trying not to fall into those traps. So the, the sense of dread and anticipation is really there. Get away! Get away! The live action elements are part of the horror for sure. We are using blended video on top of the game footage for these very strange nightmarish visions. Alan Wake as a franchise is very much supernatural, very dreamlike. So it allows us to kind of lean on that and then utilize live action in a way that doesn't feel disconnected from that kind of overall experience. Using live action film footage in our games comes from several different directions. Our games are set in a version of present day. 
And there I feel that building the world using the mediums that are present in our lives is important and makes it more believable and is just a very logical choice. We are almost like shifting through layers of reality, so we are falling into these live action bits that you see on the screen and experiencing that and then falling out of them again. Doing more live action is very, very exciting for me. Yeah. I love doing motion capture and all that, but being with you in I the know. same room, this I mean, being, yeah, okay. it's fantastic. Each shot and each scene is like different, like a different story, and it, it's been great. I've never done anything like this. It's been cool. Cheers. Thank you. Thank you. You always have an idea of what the game will be when you start out, and then more creative people who are better at your job than you are come on and do cool stuff. This idea I had is kind of not exactly as it was when we started out, but it's become this thing which is even better than what I thought it was going to be. I feel lucky that, that I have been able to stuff all kinds of crazy experimental things into this experience. Atmosphere and horror and interactive storytelling and mixing of different mediums together, all of that combined into what Alan Wake 2 is. Fans of the original game and people who may have not experienced Alan Wake, be afraid, be very afraid. So now I wait to, obviously, gameplay mechanics, kind of creating that survival horror experience is very important. There's going to be a lot to handle, but the player will have all the tools in their disposal to fight the darkness. Saga stories start relatively classic horror movie. It's like someone from the real world entering this quirky town, coming here to do a job. She has this uncanny intuition that allow her to solve difficult case. She kind of perceives that threat through the lens of this case board. The case board is a mental projection where she kind of gets to stash data that she's gathered, and that's where she makes sense of it. She's profiling suspects who appear in vision-like way. She calls it her mind place. When she's confronted to her first taking, suddenly the supernatural is really present, and she's excited about it. She's curious, it's something new for her. When Kieran meets Saga for the first time, it was interesting to have this feeling of like being protective. Like, trust me, you don't want to cross this line because when you see all the things that we've seen at FBC, there's no coming back from this. But when the supernatural threaten a family, the stakes are much higher and she has to fight for her own life and the life of her loved one. Logan? Logan! So Saga has her mind place, and then because we've got the two experiences, this idea of duality, we wanted to have the same concept mirrored on Alan Wake's side. So he has what we call the writer's room. They'll be in a version of Wake's cabin from the first game, and then inside there we have different modules that the player can interact with. One of those modules is what we call the plot board. The player can see what they've done in the past. It almost acts like a quest log in a traditional game. And the player will be discovering inspiration for Alan. So he'll be kind of coming across what we call echo scenes. Something lingered here. I have forgotten memory. An echo. These give Alan ideas that uh, the player can then utilize on the board. It's the idea of rewriting reality to be able to change the world around them. I changed the story. And with that, the dark place changed. This allows them to kind of uh, progress through areas they would not be able to before. It'll uncover new narrative information, uh, potentially even uncover more dangerous threats in, in that space. Some fed came looking for the cult, but it was a trap. Light is definitely a big part of Alan Wake 2. We have this new mechanic that allows Alan to place and remove lights in predefined scenes. And uh, since the dark place works in mysterious ways, doing this actually has a physical effect on the world. So, for example, a wall could turn into a doorway or a set of ladders. This gives, of course, different opportunities for exploration and gameplay. You need to use your light in a conservative way because sometimes it helps you to guide you away and sometimes it can actually hamper your progression. Saga needs to use her flashlight to burn away the darkness, expose weak spot, and finding new possibilities of taking down the enemies. And for Wake, it's a matter of figuring out what is real and what is not. The danger will be lurking behind every single corner. Never Definitely, light is a weapon. 
but it's also a way to survive. From time to time, you might get overwhelmed. So you need to constantly push the threat back and seek refuge in the light and manage resources while doing all that. We have put a lot of emphasis on the physicality on the enemies, where they animate and how they hit player. One thing that is important in comparison to other games that we have made, that player needs to very actively look at the enemy tells, look at their combos, time their dodges, time their attacks carefully to defeat the foe while preserving the ammo. We have weapon that allows more silenced approach, and then we have more close and personal getting the job done <laughs> style of weaponry. Alan Wake 2 is built on the foundation of our previous games. It's not just a step forward. To me, personally, it, it feels like a leap forward. The elements in interactive storytelling that I have wanted to experiment on and, and brought to our games, they are all there present, all pushed way forward in all kinds of unexpected ways. It's all a very logical continuation on this journey. The saga experience that takes place in the Pacific Northwest is only one part of this experience. The other side is us returning to play as Alan Wake and revisiting a location not only from his past, but also from Remedy's past. At the end of the first game, uh, Alan Wake dove into Cauldron Lake and ended up in the nightmare dimension underneath the lake or connected to the lake. There is a whole world there waiting and he's been stuck there ever since. It's a nightmare reality based on the person's subconscious. For Alan Wake himself, he's gone back to a place from his past. New York, this fictional version of New York has a certain magic to it. It's this archetype of a big city. To me, that feels like the right place. He is a writer from New York City. A lot of his books were these gritty, noir, grimy version of New York City. And so we're starting to see this almost replica of his own internal image of New York start to build itself around him. There's a lot of history that's happened there from a narrative experience related to his wife, Alice. There will be characters that turn up in New York that kind of are connected to some of those books that he wrote as well. The New York we refer to is an echo of the hard-boiled crime noir city present in the Alex Casey book, which is the novel written by Alan Wake. Another place to use in the story. We only used the very old school graffiti from the 70s and the 80s, and we kind of came up with our own version of it, which has a bit of a twist of like horror and nightmare. So we created something that we call nightmare graffiti. If you pay attention to details, even the smallest sign has something to say to you. And we want to create the feeling that the, the dark place is talking to Alan and the player. It's sort of a surreal, ever-changing, ever-modulating dreamscape. We want to make the player feel uneasy at all times. He has learned a lot. So we come back to him, and in some ways, he is the master of the supernatural now. Is he better off because of that? No, quite the contrary. And that, to me, also is a big part of the horror of it. Like, he's really, really lost and really, really struggling. For him, it could be one or a thousand years. He is just in this room with a typewriter, and that's his world at this point. He's just writing and writing and writing and working through a way out, like trying to find an escape through the only tool that he has, which is writing. Saga is fighting for life while Alan is fighting for his own sanity. It's really about, like, paranoia, confusion, Will you take the risk of revealing the shadow, even if there is a monster hidden behind? In the Pacific Northwest, playing a saga, I feel there's more of an ebb and flow, or at least it will feel that way to the player. They'd come back to saga as a part of the game and feel maybe a little bit of relief. Not to say that the Pacific Northwest doesn't have its own dangers, because we definitely do. To me, Il Cavilli, the physical actor of Alan Wake, and Matthew Porreda, the, the, the voice actor of Alan Wake, that is who Alan Wake is. There was never any question of Alan Wake being portrayed by anyone else. This is how, how it works. Ilka will paint a picture, 
and then he'll send it to me. And then I'll, I'll paint, the, paint a little bit on the picture, and then I send it back to him. There's this kind of collaboration that we do, and it's very rare that you see us in the same place together. It's singular, and it's, it's ours. Did you write these pages, Mr. Wake? I'm trying to remember it. When we were making Alan Wake 1, we always used to say that he's terrified but cool. I don't think that a lot of the coolness is, is left. He's in deep trouble. There's no escape. You will never escape. You will drown here. You are stuck in a loop. You don't have a clue. You are lost. There's a humanity to him that you're going to see in this game that you didn't get in the first game. There's a depth. We have a great show for you here tonight. Hi, my name is David Harewood, and I'm playing a character called Walling Door in Alan Wake. Duh. This is my talk show in between with Walling Door. Alan Wake is here. One of my all-time favorite writers and guests on the show. He seems fairly affable and friendly and fun. But as the story develops, I think you get an idea that Dor is not quite the person who he in seems to be. As an actor and a gamer, it's just really cool to be not just in a video game, but to be in a video game made by who I think are probably some of the best video makers. Their storytelling is fantastic and some of it's really dark. As a writer, you're always thinking, well, my stuff isn't good enough. Is this, you know, going to actually work? And I think Alan is getting that feedback in a much more tangible and consequential way. It's interesting taking your own profession and applying it as a threat to a character. <laughs> I, I know you from somewhere. You've just forgotten again. We're in it together. Don't worry. We have been working hard to make sure that Alan Wake 2 is a very satisfying continuation to Alan Wake's journey. It is not the story that you would expect, but in my opinion, it is the better for it, and you will be surprised, and I hope pleasantly. For me, personally, one of the, the key components in creating these kind of atmospheric experiences is definitely sound. There's not like a rule book for a playbook for like, okay, this is how you, how you make horror. Horror is, is more to do with the, the, the subconscious, the drawing on fear, like really trying to manipulate the, the player into feeling something and feeling anticipation and dread. And that is one of the hardest things and one of the most exciting things that a, a sound designer could actually do. To be able to create those sort of tension moments, we have to focus quite a lot on how the player feels. Focus on Foley and breathing, for example, because Foley and breathing within that world will bring the player so much closer to the characters. FBI, show yourself! Before you hit those tensions, before you build up to these moments, then you have to get the player to feel like Alan or like Saga. And it's a lot of focus that goes into getting that correct. If you have ever experienced something that shocks you, it takes a little while to really understand what happened. That's called the nervous delay or nerve delay, basically. If you delay that sound effect for just a little bit, it increases your own bodily effect and it becomes much more powerful that way. We play the game a lot ourselves and go, okay, what are you feeling at these points? But we often are chasing something that we've seen somewhere else, like pacing of the scenes is really important. Um, looking at like how TV shows are paced and how we build the narrative across time throughout the entire game. We had to use some extraordinary instruments, among them Marvin. It's interesting to play those instruments because they aren't equipped with a keyboard or despite the fact that you bow them, they don't reproduce anything that resembles even closely any string instrument or whatnot. They are just producing noise. We did a lot of recordings on instruments as well on the audio design side, so we were smashing them up, submerging them, bowing them. We sent these to Petri, Petri sends us his stem, so it's a very collaborative effort and just specifically in the dark place because we want to blur the line between sound design and music. Hello. Hello, Wake. 
Music is part of the storytelling and an important component. When Petri Alanko was working on the soundtrack of the first game, it was a wonderful experience and collaboration. I feel that looking back to the soundtrack that went on to win multiple awards, it's a huge part of the feeling, emotion, and it captures the Pacific Northwest landscapes and the scary parts of the experience so well. Remedy is quite clearly in a league of their own when it comes to storytelling, characters and so forth. It's uh, important to me as a composer because they sort of give you the brain food for the themes, motifs and orchestration. I, I really, really wanted to keep on working with Petri. There was no question about him not returning to Alan Wake 2. It's been wonderful having him back working on the soundtrack for this game. Look in the mirror. The, the relationship that we've had with poets has been going on for a long time, and it's been really cool to watch them grow and get more used to what we have to do. We've been collaborating with Poets of the Fall ever since Max Payne 2. And the big step forward in that was the idea of them assuming the role of an in-world fictional band of old gods of Asgard for Alan Wake. And songs that were custom made to comment on the plot and the lore of the world. When Sam came back to me and, and said that they're actually doing more Alan Wake and they wanted old gods to have an even sort of bigger role in it, and that was very exciting. I don't think there was ever a question in our minds about whether we would do it or not. It's always been so much fun to do that stuff, and it's challenging in its ways, but it's also um, educational from the get-go. It was like, yeah, let's do this. <laughs> we have absolutely stunning pieces of music that we are using to give you a further perspective into the story custom made for Alan Wake 2. <laughs>